Our next guest said his firm saw the highest level of M&A activity in its history despite COVID lockdowns over the last year and certainly the last quarter. Joining us now is Ken Mollis. He's the founder, chairman and CEO of Mollis and Company. Ken, always good to have you. Uh, and I'd love to just start off on the quarter itself. Your, your, your company stock is up a bit this morning. It's near its all time highs. Um, I think you said that it's the highest level of client activity you've ever seen. Um, is that the case? And if so, why? Yeah. Hi, David. Good morning. Yes, I think uh, we continue to see just what you're talking about on the show today, the disruptive nature of the economy, low interest rates, and every company in the world, I think, who started out with their business January 1st of 2020, I've got to believe by January 1st of 2021, they've had thoughts as to whether they're in the right businesses with the right capitalizations, right digital strategies. So there's just a lot of transformation going on. Yeah, you know, you said this on the call, and I wanted to t ask you to sort of expand on it. You said, uh, I've never seen the business community in a shorter period of time rethink everything about what they're doing. What does that actually mean? Well, that's correct. I think if you if you were in business uh, a year ago today, uh, you know, you, you didn't have a great view of COVID. Uh, maybe some people did. What it would do to the world, what it would do to digital transformation, I think we've accelerated uh, lots of changes in the economy by uh, five to ten years. I know we might talk about one that I, you know, I was involved with yesterday in terms of taking an exciting, oh, yeah. disruptive company. Oh yeah, we'll get well, there. I figured that might happen. Yeah, but this is happening almost in every business in America, and it's and it's exciting for some, and it's also defensive for some. Some people have to take defensive moves. Right. Uh, and it's funny because you have a restructuring business that obviously benefited, certainly in the early part of COVID, where it looked like there were going to be a lot of restructurings. Has that followed through or is it, you know, are you surprised, Ken, at where we are uh, 11 months in, given what we saw in the March, April period? Yes, it would be hard for me to have predicted this. Uh, I think it's a testament to free market capitalism, innovation. It's ex extraordinary what the community has done in the face of a world that was turned upside down to reimagine their business and come out where it is. It really, it really is an amazing year. Yeah, but you, you, you know, I mean, you and I have been talking for a long time. You're not a huge fan of what the Fed is doing. I can't, can't imagine you are. And don't you believe in some way it's planting the seeds for uh, some, well, the seeds of our own demise, not to put it too sharply? You know, David, I, I really put this year in a different box. I, in most years, I might have that view this was, uh, there was sort of what I, I look at as an almost eminent domain, that there was a taking of certain people's uh, livelihoods and, and businesses were, were shut by, by order of the government for the benefit, deemed to be for the benefit of all. By the way, we'll, we'll determine whether that was the correct answer one day, but it happened. And if the government forces you out of your business, I, I do think the government has to take extraordinary steps to, to recompense you for that. So this is... This is very different than most of my philosophies this year. Yeah, well, all right. So you're not worried about a level of speculation in the market? I mean, let's go Carnival today. Three and a half billion dollars, six-year notes, 575, I think, is what they're getting. Unsecured, Ken. That doesn't concern you? You know, look, there's sophisticated people on both sides. Carnival has a great franchise. There will be people cruising any day now. Um, or you could put your uh, money into, I think, the German bunds for 10 years and get back negative money. So I think people are taking their choice and, and making their investments, David. And, uh, you know, I think that's probably a valid investment in a great franchise. And how are you preparing for the fact that maybe, you know, if it is a sort of a speculative period we're in, that it could come to an end somewhat similar, let's say, to what we saw in 2000? I mean, are you at MOLIS sort of positioned for that, even if you don't expect it? Yes. I, look, I, I think you always expect the unexpected. It's the one thing. Take your risks in certain places. We maintain an unlevered, very liquid balance sheet, and then we take our risks operationally in things we're experts at, and then we maintain a, a buffer against the unknown. And I think it's a good way to go. It's worked well for us. Right. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.